This is an example of running and interpreting OLS in R, and it's related to one of the practice questions in this chapter. So I'm going to describe a data set and then call some functions and then just walk through the output a little bit. Uh, so this data set comes from a real published uh, academic economics paper where they ran a randomized experiment where they took resumes and they would take a single resume that they had created and then take one copy of it and assign to it a white sounding name uh, like Emily or Greg and then take an identical copy of the resume but just change the name to either Lakeisha or Jamal to try to signal a more black sounding name and then they sent out these resumes to real employers who were really hiring for jobs and uh, saw how often the um, resume generated a request for an interview. Um, so that's this variable here, call back means where, the, where they called back to have an interview or did the employer just get the resume and not do anything about it. Um, so this, uh, the other variable here, black in the data set is a binary variable. It's one or zero, depending on the name that was put on the resume. Um, and so one thing we can do before running OLS uh, is to just look at a table to try to see the different counts of data. Uh, so here, if we look at this 2200 number here in the top left, that means there are 2200 resumes where, or observations where black is equal to zero and callback is equal to zero. And then next to it, this 235 over here, that's how many observations had black equal to zero and callback equal to one. And so you can see the sum over here just sums those two numbers. Um, and so there's a total of 2,435 observations in the data set where black is equal to zero. And uh, as I said, this was randomized and they sort of took each resume and just had one uh, you know, white name version and one black name version. So that's why these two sums here are identical, 2,435. Uh, but as you can see, whether or not uh, the resume generated a callback or an interview uh, is different depending on the name that was put on the resume. Um, so out of the same 2,435 uh, resumes, um, the black equals zero or the white names generated 235 interview requests, whereas the uh, identical resumes with the black sounding names uh, generated only 157 interview requests. Um, and you can also see the sums for the columns and the total number of observations. So sometimes it's nice just to, to get a sense of how many uh, observations have different uh, values associated with them to see whether you know we have a lot of data for all four different possibilities or whether maybe one of them is very uh, low for some reason. So having looked at that I'm going to call the lm function which runs OLS uh, using uh, this data set. Um, so here we specify the outcome variable as callback and then there's this tilde and then black is the regressor, the only regressor here. And then by default there's also an intercept term added. Uh, so I'll hit control enter to run that. Um, and now using the sandwich package we'll compute this 
heteroscedasticity robust or heteroscedasticity consistent um, covariance matrix or equivalently standard errors is how we'll use those. And then I can use these functions from the LM test uh, package to actually print out the results just like was shown in the uh, textbook chapter. Um, and this is what we get when we print those out. So you can see the first row is all about the intercept. You can see the estimated intercept and standard error and some other things. Um, the estimate here is roughly 0.1 or in other words 10%. Um, so that's, if we look up back at our table here, you can see 235 out of roughly 2400. That's about 10% of the, uh, when the regressor is zero, about 10% of the time there is a callback. So that's why where that 0.1 comes from there. And then the uh, coefficient on the regressor is showing the difference between the means when the regressor equals one and when it equals zero. Um, so in this case, it's showing the difference in the callback rate between the black and white name uh, groups. Um, and so this minus 0 0.03 estimated coefficient is like our beta hat one on our regressor. It's saying there's about a three percentage point lower callback rate for the uh, black name resumes than for the white name resumes. Uh, if we then move over to the next column where it says standard error, this is, uh, since we were careful, these are heteroscedasticity robust standard errors. So in this case, uh, the standard error, the estimated standard error for beta one is 0 0.00778. And then from that, it's also computing a T statistic for the null hypothesis that the true beta one is equal to zero. So we can see directly that the estimated beta one is not equal to zero. We can also try to gauge, well, how much uncertainty do we have about that? Um, so here's a, that and then the corresponding P value for that test, the hypothesis test of whether the true beta one is equal to zero. Um, here it's using scientific notation because the p-value is so close to zero. Um, so this e minus 0 0.05 basically means take the decimal point here and move it five spots to the left. So that would be like 0 0.00003394. Very, very close to zero. So uh, we would reject the null hypothesis that the true beta one is equal to zero at uh, certainly a 5% significance level, also a 1% level, and even like a 0.001% level. Um, and last, these last two columns together show a 95% confidence interval for beta one down here. So the lower endpoint is point is sorry negative zero point zero four seven, and the upper endpoint is negative point zero one six eight. So it's sort of saying if we you know run this particular ninety five percent confidence interval in lots of different data sets, uh, ninety five percent of the time we will have an interval that contains the true value. So we're not 100% sure that the true beta one is in this range, uh, but it gives us a good sense of our um, uncertainty. So it could be a three percentage point difference in the interview callback rate between the white and black names. 
Um, it could be maybe as low as four percentage point, or I guess low or high, depending on if you're thinking of absolute value or not. Um, I guess the magnitude could be almost five percentage points difference, um, or it could be more like one and a half percentage points difference. Uh, but it seems like there's probably some difference in the, you know, two, three, four uh, percentage point range. So hopefully that gives you um, some sense of just interpreting this basic OLS output in R. Um, hope that was helpful.